So we've selected the proper bat for us. Let's go ahead and start from the feet and work ourselves up all the way up to the head and the eye area. Before we talk about the stance, we've got to figure out where we want to stand in the box. I'm going to be considering this the back of home plate. This is going to be the front. I'm going to assume that we're dealing with right-handed batters. I want my back foot somewhere in the middle to the front of the plate. And there are a number of reasons for that. One, if you've got a pitcher that has good ball movement, you're going to be making contact with that pitch before it moves too much on you as a batter. The other factor that's important that you want to consider is how close to the plate do I want to be? I want to be close enough to that plate that when I extend, the sweet part of the bat or the barrel of the bat covers the home plate area. If I stand back here and I extend through here, I'm not covering the outside of the plate. So once I stand in the middle of the plate, close enough so when I extend, the barrel of my bat covers the outside of the plate. So when you come into the box, middle of the plate, feet close enough to cover the outside of the plate, and now you're in your hitting stance. Now that we have the location in the box, let's talk about how far apart we want our feet. You want your feet far enough apart, whether it be hip or shoulder width apart. That way we have a nice firm foundation to set up our swing. You don't want to be too narrow because you're not going to be able to have the balance when you come through with your swing. You don't want to be too wide or else you're going to eliminate opening up those hips and getting a lot of power on your swing. So it's comfortable, distance apart, hopefully at least hip or shoulder width apart, your feet from each other. You want your toes to be pointing towards home plate. You don't want to open up like this because now I've already opened up my hips and my hips are going to be gener generating a lot of power through the swing. I don't want to be closed off too much because now it's going to be hard for me to open up my hips. So make sure that those toes are pointing towards home plate. Before I move up my body, I need to talk about my weight, where my weight is right now in my stance. I want to have the weight on the balls of my feet, but not to the point where I'm going to be lifting up off of my heels, off of the ground. And I also want to have them on the balls of my feet and on the inside of my feet. Almost where, if I could simulate these are my, my shoes, my feet, I'm on my balls of my feet and the weight is turned inward. This would be a side view. These are my feet pointing towards home plate on the balls of my feet and inward. The reason for that is to maintain the balance when we go ahead into the stride, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. Let's go up each body part. So as a coach, you have markers to look at when you're trying to break down the girl's swing. The next area would be the knees. Make sure they're slightly bent. That way they'll be relaxed when they get ready to power through the ball. A relaxed joint will react quicker than a flexed, hyperextended joint. So make sure the knees are bent comfortably for the batter. The next area would be the hips. I want to be slightly bent at the hip. Not a lot and not hyperextended, just slightly bent. My hips are facing home plate because what they're going to do is they're going to swing forward on the pivot to create a nice quick swing when we get ready to hit the pitch. So make sure our hips are facing home plate. I've talked to you about my grip. My shoulders are very similar to my hips. They work together and they move in unison. My left shoulder is facing the pitcher. 
The left shoulder is also key, a key area to look at for the coach because many times this, this left shoulder will pull out too soon. We call this just pulling out. They have a tendency to have their weight go back and as a batter, you now are vulnerable to the outside pitch. So coaches make sure that they keep that lead shoulder or the front shoulder in close when they're in their hitting stance. So we got the knees bent, the hips slightly bent, our shoulders are square, just like the hips are, to home plate. Now, one of the most important areas in the swing is the hand position. Many girls are gonna say, well, where should I put the bat? How should I hold my hands in the stance? Well, we just try and keep it real simple. If you're a right-handed batter, just put up your right hand like you're just gonna make a fist. And simply, put the bat in that hand. It's just like that. So you make a fist, put the bat right there in the fist, and now you've got proper position for the bat. As I mentioned before, the knuckle alignment, which can vary. We have some girls that like it like this, like this, like this. You just have to be very careful that they're not gripping the bat tightly or over rotating the hands. Because if you do that, you will see that they're gonna have a tendency to drop that back shoulder. But watch what happens when we go ahead and straighten out those knuckles. When they come through, the back shoulder stays nice and high. And we'll talk about that when we break down the actual extension of the swing. Another area that you can look at to be sure that the batter is holding the bat in the proper position are the arms. <clears throat> Ideally, you want those elbows pointing down towards the ground. Many girls have a tendency to do this or they do this. The reason you want to eliminate both of those is it creates a longer time to get the club head out in front. If I have my hand back here, now my bat has to travel from all the way back here, come through to here. If I'm here, the barrel has to even go further, all the way around, through to here. But if I keep the barrel of the bat right over my back shoulder, fairly close to my head, all I have to do when I go ahead and take my stride and pivot, come through, all I have to do now is extend. If I'm in the proper position, when I go to extend, I'm gonna get maximum bat speed from this position right here. Think of this as almost like an A-frame. We wanna get into an A-frame type position. Now you may have some girls that like to have the bat up a little bit higher. Some like to have it almost parallel with the ground. And by parallel, all we mean is the bat is in line with the ground. So you make the fist, Go ahead and put the handle of the bat in your hand, line up those knuckles, and then just lift. Make sure we have a nice A-frame position on the, arm, on the arms right here. Something like this. You're comfortable. Now the bat is ready to be launched or the club head's ready to come through. This area is probably one of the most important. The next area is also very important. That is gonna be when we stride forward. Before, before we do that, let's continue on up to figure out what we're gonna do with our head. It's another area of concern for the coaches because many times girls have a difficult time making sure that their head not only is level as far as not bending this way or this way, because when you bend your head this way, you're incorporating more muscles in the eyes that have to coordinate the, the focus. But if I keep my head up and turn completely to the pitcher, make sure we have both eyes focusing on the pitcher. A way to determine that both eyes are focusing on the pitcher is to just go ahead and close your lead eye. I would consider this my lead eye for a right-handed batter. So go ahead and close that eye to make sure that you're focusing both eyes on the pitcher. That's a good check for each player or coach when the batter is up there. 
As I said before, I want to make sure that my eyes are parallel to the ground. I don't want to be tilting either way because then I'm going to be incorporating more muscle interaction which makes it harder to focus with my eyes. So I have proper hand position. The angle of my bat is somewhere between 0 and 30 or 40, whichever is comfortable. We have that A-frame with the arms. They are bent. We want those arms bent because we want to be able to create extension when we go ahead and swing the bat. So let's just go ahead and quick review. Position in the box to be able to cover the outside of the plate. Good hand position on the handle. Gripping the bat in the, the fingers and not the palms. Line up those knuckles somewhere around the middle knuckles. You want your, your stride length or your setting up length somewhere between the hip and the shoulder distance apart. Not narrow and not too wide. You want your knees slightly bent, your hips slightly bent, your lead shoulder pointing at the pitcher. Hand position close to the back of the ear, not too far away from my head. We want to make sure that bat is somewhere between a zero 30 and 40 degree angle. My head is, both eyes are focused on the pitcher and my eyes are parallel with the ground getting ready to hit that pitch. 